today is finally the day. <laughs> I already tried filming this video once before. It was quite the humiliating experience. Melanie has been teasing us with a countdown towards a hatching situation, which I have no idea what it is to me. I think she's just going to be releasing an album, honestly. So is the movie like out of the question? What's going on? It'll look like a right little tit if it's just me reacting to buy your tickets to her next movie. So. <laughs> She's only releasing the date. She hasn't even released the album. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed. Who does a countdown to the announcement of a date? A lot of her sneak peeks have been very, I don't want to say the word boring, but just slow and whimsical, which is fine. But I love a beat. I love a bit of R&B. I was expecting Melanie to go down that route a bit more, considering her K-12 album did. I'm actually really peeved. <laughs> but that's in the past now. I can finally sit and melt my way into Melanie Martinez's new album called Portals. My gorgeous little squishy pants of a partner surprised me with her limited edition cassette tape. By the way, the art is so cute on, fr on the front of it. The tape itself is pink, as you can see at the back here. I was completely like shocked and surprised that he did that in secret. Speaking of, I'm curious to know what you guys think about the new kind of aesthetic and vibe that Melanie's brought forward. I always get nervous when someone I really Really like releases new music because there is that chance that they completely change their angle and it just doesn't hit in the same way that, that the old stuff does. I've been a fan of Melanie for I want to say over 10 years now. We're going to see Melanie Martinez. Ready for Melanie Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> kind of grown up alongside someone, it's difficult to match their changes in style and how they evolve and stuff. But what I've, in a happy accident kind of way, really enjoyed about Melanie is that our kind of eras have somehow coincided alongside each other all this time. The things she sings about and the stories and messages I've always happened to resonate with, like as they've been released. So it feels very much like I've grown up with her. I've done a lot of videos about how I feel about her music and studying her music. If you're interested in seeing my K-12 video essay, there's a link somewhere around here. I get the impression that from what she's explained in how she came up with each song, she didn't have a movie in mind for this album. I feel like she might have this album is kind of like an in-between between the first movie and the next one. I have a feeling her next, I might be wrong. This is just my theory. This might just be a kind of like transition. I mean, it's called Portals in itself. Like I'm wondering whether this, this whole album is kind of like a tunnel in between K-12 and the next kind of generation of Crybaby. So like um, the process of like her being from that dimension into the next one, this is kind of like the bridge. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> she just does things in such a clever way, which I really appreciate. I love it when someone's clever in their instrumentals as well as their lyrics and just their like artistic choices. I can really appreciate that over someone who just wants to create things that sound nice. <laughs> I like it when an artist is brave enough to go deeper than that. We were kind of anticipating a new movie to come out alongside her new album, at least I was anyway. So if you don't know, she released K-12 um, at the same time as she released the K-12 album. Melanie fans were sitting in the cinema watching her new movie while hearing her new album at the same time. So I wasn't able to sit and make a little reaction video. I wasn't gonna whip my camera out. But hey, that was like such a nice surprise and so different. Like I'd never experienced sound music in that kind of art form before. So once again, she just like pushes the barrier. Sneak peek she's released and death, which she did release. I'm getting test me vibes. I don't know about you guys. From the title of the album and the stuff that she shared online, it does seem very heavy afterlife focused, evolving as a person, as a human, like transcending and death, not just being the end of something. It's more of like a process that we go to before entering like a new phase of ourselves, like losing a shell, entering a portal and sort of like becoming a new I suppose and that's something very evident in my faith things such as shadow work which I believe some of the lyrics that I've heard sound like they could be playing along the idea of that like it's okay to do that because we shouldn't be so stubborn about our identities be brave enough to be a new person if that means that old friends and family members aren't going to recognize us anymore that's 
that's not our problem. We can create new stories every day for ourselves. Because this video is an initial reaction video, I'm not actually gonna react to death because she did release that song a few days ago now and I have listened to that a lot. So it won't even be like a near initial reaction. It'll just be me listening to a song that I've been playing pretty much on repeat. I really enjoy it. Her songs are more of an experience. Like they are bops. But I don't tend to put Melanie on in the background as much as I do other singers that I really like because I kind of treat her stuff as a little bit more of like a movie kind of thing. Like I put it on when I want to like really take it in, listen to the story, be led down some sort of narrative and journey. Numbers does a really good job of that because she she produced that song to make it feel like a running river. Um, there's parts of that song that feel like you're at the dam or like you're at the waterfall part and then you get brushed down and that you go into the street part and it gets more floaty and I just love how she thinks about these things. It's lovely. If you want to hear me talk more about her old stuff, then I'll leave links to any Melanie video I've ever made around this video somewhere. Oh. Already that's a very visual sound. Okay. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Eee! It constantly sounds like it's slowing down. It does feel like you're in some sort of like, I mean, it is literally called void. <laughs> I'm seeing spirals when I listen to this song. I feel like the songs are kind of in order of her like releasing from her earthly form, perhaps. Like death is obviously her leaving earth. She still has parts of society in her and maybe the rest of the album is explaining how a lot of that is being released. <laughs> I think this song is gonna do really well from the perspective of people who don't know Melanie. It's more approachable, I think, as a singular song. A bit more digestible, I suppose. But yeah, this sounds like a, an acceptance of like transition, of releasing like old habits, old beliefs, old systems. She talks about intestines and stuff, so it's like that bridge. I'm trying to find the doorway. Trying to find the doorway. Yeah, I'm kind of getting like Alice in Wonderland vibes, like she's falling down from Earth. <laughs> it's funny because in the end of K-12, she doesn't enter that doorway, which is supposed to represent them going into the next life or something. I mean, I mean, we never had any answers, but it was Lilith like inviting them in and she chose not to. So it's almost like, has she entered like another portal instead? Or did she end up going in that? Because we're experiencing the death of Crybaby here. Melanie's done something really clever in that she obviously wants to always evolve and doesn't want to probably attach to old ways of doing things and the aesthetic that she gave herself. And if she's got a new one, she's kind of embracing it in a in a storytelling way of philosophy and like how it's important to do so in life anyway. Aesthetic and not, just being a better, bigger person, evolving as a human being. Anyway. Ooh. The way she says me. <laughs> Unsettling, but it reminds me of numbers. That chorus is very, very catchy. Once again, I can just imagine hearing this in so many places. Judge myself. Off the beat, like out of the blue oh. notes. <laughs> I haven't heard the rest of the album yet, so I'm gonna like put it at around about like seven, maybe. I remember screaming that chorus while crying. It felt like a weight I needed to get off me. The weight of my anxiety, a dark place where you are left alone with your own thoughts for introspection in order to find the light within yourself. <laughs> Once again, it feels very shadow work-esque. Let's move into tunnel vision. Tunnel. Yes, we're doing that transition now. We've moved from the tunnel into the portal. Ooh, where's this going? What is your put to the test? It's kind of like judgment day, maybe. Test me vibes. I'd rather be tested by goddesses. Resting their heads upon pillows are all they've learned. I 
like that part where it's like do 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 So it's about like trickery and stuff. Manipulation maybe. Tunnel vision's an interesting title because I suppose it's like wanting to get something out of somebody as we're talking about like entering portals and going down a tunnel. But then it's also making me think of vision as in like illusion coming into the process of like releasing why things went the way they did and like removing old habits and patterns and stuff is kind of understanding them I suppose and for what they actually are rather than like how you've been perceiving them your whole life or like the eventual manifestation of how they appeared in your life or like made you end up like if that makes sense i like thought the cherry would be better than the pie mm. what can that mean once again queen of metaphors sometimes you need to sit with these lyrics Yes, you hold me like you're rushing to my thighs. Too fast, too fast, too fast. That's your demise. That part is talking about sexually, but it's like people in general maybe doing something to get to the middle of it rather than just enjoying it for what it is. Very visual. This is giving me numbers. Show me how far obsession goes. Could have been more now, I never know. Ooh, crossing my heart, I'd rather die than be the needle in your eye. Making a lot of references to like the center of some of something. like a microphone on your ultra ultrasound <laughs> put it over someone's pregnant belly and the baby's like doing a creepy little song inside the womb i mean that might be part of the, the point obviously this is about reba by the way i felt like she she missed missed the mark a little bit here i thought this album would be perfect to release on the easter equinox day of spring as spring began but i don't know how much control she has over her release date <laughs> It's different, that's for sure. Didn't I don't think I liked that one as much as I did Void, so I'm gonna put that one further down. Next up, we have Fairy Soiree. Okay, this feels very different already. can 100% imagine her belly dancing to this. She does a lot of belly dancing videos. I'm waiting for it to kick in, but I have a feeling it won't. It will just kind of continue like this. It's very nature inspired and it sounds like that feeling you kind of get when you're like outside of anything urban. When you're in the middle of nowhere and you feel kind of like untouchable, free and like in some form of escapism. So I'm imagining part of that portal process is her kind of like going back to her natural form maybe. Being part of the universe I suppose. Oh, yeah, see, somewhere on Venus they're searching for me while I'm covered in muck from Earth and the sea. She's kind of in her like ethereal state, being one with like everyone and everything, nature and people in a space. You could be in the afterlife where like you have vision of like all of your stories, old and new. And it's kind of sang a little bit like a hymn because it's almost like a prayer in a way. Like it kind of sounds a little bit like a organ somewhat in the background. If you're in a place where you're literally part of like divine, it feels very fitting. Oh, I kept dancing to it, being overtaken by fairy energy. Energy. What did I say? I literally could imagine her dancing to that song. <laughs> I feel like she's she created that song as like a, maybe a kind of representation of her like zone of authentic creative expression. For me anyway, dance, and for a lot of people, dancing is, is like a good way to like shift your energy in general. When you're in a rut, moving your body as well can kind of like loosen up tension and things. And if we're talking about some kind of like portal into another world, it gives me the world card vibes in tarot. The very last card of the major arcana 
deck where she has all of the experience from the rest of the cards underneath her. Bask in that wisdom and knowledge with confidence and self-expression and she's naked and raw and authentic. It felt like the stage of homecoming art. The card's also about like promotion, progression, finishing line of something and celebrating that as well. Connecting with my soul family. So it's like a homage to a fairy guide's light shower. Let's go. My air freshener went off just as I breathed out there. You are the light I've been searching for forever. Feel like, man, I've never really felt the rain. So this is actually about a cleansing shower. I know this because I distinctly remember from the little like scan I did of her reasoning behind each song. This stuck with me more than more than some of the other stuff because it's about like light showers, which is supposedly something that a lot of people who have experienced life death have witnessed. It's like a bright encapsulating light that basically cleanses them from all of like their earthly traumas and stuff. What she's done here I feel is very cleverly made it relatable on like earthly matters. So this would make a re I haven't even played the song properly yet. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here but it sounds like it could be translated into a little bit of a love song as well if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yeah, you could easily think this would be a song about someone who's healed you and helped you. I'm not used to all this water, love is true. I like the truth. It's madness, I'm not used to all this water, love you. Ooh. Playing out my last days on our eating you. I just love her lyrics so much. You make me want to plan out my last days on earth eating you. I can kind of imagine this being a really nice funeral song. <laughs> Oh, that lyric but i really like it <laughs> this song reminds me of the little like dreamy kind of buzz you get you're in that kind of honeymoon phase or like you've just done the deed maybe had a glass of, of wine any day of the week baby cleanse me it's so cute. It's really nice. This is gonna be my my bath ritual song. <laughs> Next time I'm like, I'm needing to release some emotions. I'm just gonna play this song. And slip into another dimension for a few minutes. voice sounds just like soap and that song is obviously about bathtubs as well. I've also <laughs> just read here a few weeks later I sat in my bathtub with my guitar and stayed up all night writing a love song about this light. A love song about this light. How cute is that? A love song about the concept of being cleansed by God or whatever you want to call it. Imagining what it would feel like while the warmth of the sun was hitting One me. of my favorite forms of meditation is sun cleansing meditation where you basically bask in sunlight. You can physically feel the presence of the sun obviously there and you can imagine that energy a lot easier. So I'll bite all the insects and all the flies watching the cycle they're in. Maybe she's in some sort of cocoon stage at this point, being inspired by nature around her, which is very witchy. A very important part of like learning to evolve as a person is to, I guess, take comfort in the fact that things are always evolving around us anyway, and we can take that as inspiration and as like necessity of human life and beauty as well, because Obviously, caterpillar to butterfly is a beautiful process, but we as humans can become very attached to our ego of ourselves and other people, making it very hard for us to transition as easy as nature does around us in the seasons, in creatures. Better off dead than wasting my hours flying where I shouldn't be. I mean, refusing to change and evolve and to drop your old patterns. You're literally better off dead because you're just living a life that ain't yours.
Oh, I love that. Catchy chorus, very catchy chorus. So it was very different to the verse though. So I feel like people who would like, who are really into K-12 would probably appreciate this song a little bit more. Spinning all your silk and moving all of your eight legs. Build a web that will spread through the world. Her songs are just like poetry. So it's kind of like representing losing consciousness of your efforts, I guess, and your battles and struggles and where they come from and trying to like make sense of them. When they've merged, it's very difficult to evolve and grow and learn because you're trapped inside of that manipulation i suppose it should have maybe been placed i feel further up in the album oh i like this This song's very clever. The center may seem like a gift. Once you arrive, it will strip you of your life. Once again, it's playing with the idea of the cherry and the pie, doing something for gain or like greed or need, like as Buddha says, to desire, to want is suffering. Feeling like you'll be happier once you have something that seems desirable and you get to the middle of that but it just brings you closer to how you feel in yourself is never going to change depending on what you've physically got in the tangible world perhaps oh so it's written about social media's chokehold on society i wouldn't have picked up on the that the center may seem like a gift once you arrive it will strip you from life and you wish that you never did i suppose it is the kind of same thing that i've been talking about you could just apply social media to it so it's feeling like once you get to a place where you're wanted and accepted by millions of people, you will start to accept yourself, but actually that comes from you and no one else in the first place. So that kind of fame, fortune, glittery lifestyle could kind of appear a bit like a spider web where it looks pretty. Once you're there, it's sticky. It's hard to get rid of. As they say, your digital footprint is permanent based on media. If it says up all night bound to their addiction to it, the spider could be people like grabbing onto social media stars, which are the flies in the web. On the web. Oh, <laughs> have I just completely missed a massive obvious metaphor there about spider web, website, internet. <laughs> the spider could be them like sucking the blood from the addiction, the obsession to those that they kind of idolize, romanticize, and um, put on a pedestal, I suppose. Like it's an obsession until they're just run dry. <laughs> I like how all of the th the themes on taking, like things taking control, the same sort of stuff Melanie always seems to do. In K-12, the entire school is a representation of society. The smaller you can make a representation of society, the more easier it is to see how it works and has like an effect on people. And that's what she did with the, the movie through like different symbolisms. But she's kind of doing that in this album as well. But the symbolism is in nature and things that you would see in the natural world that is you know, sucking the life dry of people and leeches and what they do and like the more gross aspects, I suppose, of something very beautiful. It's just putting a little bit of a spin on it because obviously she's entering her like natural form, trying to incorporate natural elements to the messages that she's trying to bring across. <laughs> Nor on my bones, no marrow left to keep you enthralled. <laughs> The, the like background where you can hear the like insects coming in every now and again to make it feel like you're sitting in the middle of the night in a field or something, <laughs> I think is really effective. The way she's singing as well makes it feel like someone's like crawling or like hunting. Let all their friends in, the enemy's present. They don't think too hard about your fragile heart. They eat off the table that you set so you starve, accidentally letting in people who don't have your best interest at heart as well as the people that do. Picking and choosing who you let in, what energy you give to people, otherwise, you'll have nothing left for yourself. How much blood can you draw with... Ooh. Ugh, it's like someone stuck inside of like a... Something and insects kind of like entangled you into. How much blood can you draw with your claws from a flesh that's not yours? <sighs> It's like the exact opposite of trying to improve yourself as a human being from going within and instead 
taking from others because you're so far from developing on yourself and figuring out how to go about that and dissecting that in yourself you start dissecting other people chipping away who they are as people to kind of fill that void going back to our first song here and that's kind of all there is to it really like we can kind of comfort ourselves in knowing that every person around us is basically a mirror reflection of ourselves but at the end of the day there is also people who are just so far from wanting to improve themselves as people that they will just always be <laughs> the shell of the person they could basically have been which is a leech it's not the most catchiest song though i felt like i probably feel like i would put this one at the bottom if i'm gonna be honest the battle of the larynx will this be about self-expression you used all your words for a quick game night of cups energy talking someone into bed maybe This girl needs to stop coming out of these sentences that I need to stop and digest for about half an hour because there's musical chairs in my teeth. <laughs> Is that itself trying to speak how the fact she talks in freaking poetry? I speak in cursive, I'm poignant, assertive. There's musical chairs in my teeth. <laughs> we know. That's why I'm so successful, girl. Yes. basically talking about intention here words and the power that they have and she as someone who i relate to in that i i'm so like maybe too much so intentional with what i say in my words like even with the stuff that i make online i know it's going to be there forever talking to people like face to face in real life as well i'm very like particular about what i say because i want it to actually like be meaningful and i i hate the idea of saying something and then meaning something different later or like not saying it in the correct way that i wanted it to come across it does make you a little bit crazy sometimes though and it makes seeing other people which maybe is what melanie's singing about who don't do that as kind of like mind-blowing how can you not be <laughs> someone who articulates in like an authentic sensitive emotional manner <laughs> I like this song because I feel like I can really relate to it. She isn't the type to say anything, like call someone out for something unless they kind of truly, truly have deserved it because it's everyone's own responsibility to do that in themselves. And I think what's really effective about this song and once again, Melanie in general is that metaphoric way of speaking is effective in that she's not coming across as like aggressive telling people what to do. She's not just straight up saying like F you, which I think a lot of artists do now and people think it's really empowering. It's more effective, I think, when you can say it in a very poetic way, which kind of has double meaning. She's not being high and mighty and saying like, I'm better than you, end of. It's like, I've done my work, you need to do it too, quite clearly. A more mature way? I guess self-empowering. I'm not a confrontational person, unless I'm really pushed. I think she actually mentions that herself. Poke me to battle, I'll jump on the saddle. So it's like there within her if it's necessary, because she has that self-worth, but it's like, I'm strong enough not to be rattled by people who are beneath me and need to work on themselves. <laughs> Just being validated by a group of lads who will tell you you're in the right all the time. To be fair, you don't have to be a group of lads. I think girls also have enablers. <laughs> um, a group of people that will like tell you, oh babe, like you're always doing the right thing. And what you actually need is that person who can be like, shouldn't have done that maybe. Or like people who just need to call you out for your shitty behavior when it's necessary. Mature friends who aren't just gonna like constantly cheer you on when you've got blood all over your face. <laughs> Ooh. 
cinematic drama. It kind of makes me think of her going back into a public setting of poise. I like that wind ambience as well. It makes me think of the element of wind, which is about your voice, your words, and that song's obviously about larynx, which is about using that power that you have, but in an intentional way. I like it, I really like that one. I'm rating that quite high, actually. I do like how the song almost sounds a tiny bit muffled. It plays along the theme of, obviously, being about words and voice and expression. I wrote this one to be about two different conflict styles. One person who yells a bunch of nothing really loudly to try and intimidate, and the other who can calmly and concisely use their words and wit to prove their point. That was exactly what I was saying. You win an argument a lot better. Try and prove a point a lot better when you're, like, witty and smart about your words, rather than just making a whole lot of freaking noise. Oh, it's sort of like a continuation of the end of the larynx. larynx. There's a lot of breathing in this album. Whoa. Oh, I like this one. This is a song you can see. It's just making me envision someone like becoming the box. If being bent backwards was a sound, it would be the sound of cracking bones. <laughs> Oh, and that laugh is like just becoming kind of, um, I suppose like a programmed version of, of someone's ideals. So like almost robotic. This bit reminds me of like the fact the person is still living, the blood still pumping in their body and the heartbeat is still there, but it's like so squashed between all the back bending and the bones crushing around the person that it's sped up as well. The way she's singing, it's like a bit like a rabbit would be if they were like cornered or something. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. What's going on here? The outros of all these songs is almost like her moving into the next one. So it's making me think maybe there will be a movie about all of these weird worlds and rooms that she enters in. Ooh, next one, I'm excited about this one. It's called Moon Cycle. Apparently this was made very intentionally grim in a way to people who may be stigmatizing and demonizing the very natural concept of being on your period. Woo! I sense a little bit of sarcasm in this song. Baby boy, you know I'm on my period, yeah. <laughs> it's not even like important whether she is or isn't. It's kind of just like a, it's what happens, isn't it? Like I'm delirious. As if to say like, oh, maybe I'm on my period. When really it's like, no, this is just self-expression or like something I'm trying to say or I'm mad right now, I'm angry about something. Um, but don't worry about like the actual issue. Maybe I'm just on my period. That's that's the feeling I get from this song. I don't know. He says he doesn't care he's into this. It's like instantly sexualizing. So what I find really interesting about this song is out of the lot, it's the less metaphorical and it's straight to like what it is. She's obviously done that very intentionally. She's a very intentional artist, like that's not an accident. Um, I think she's done that as like a rebellious act, I suppose, on the fact that it doesn't have place that could potentially hold double meaning. Like she wants it to be obvious that there is no double meaning. She is talking about a period. <laughs> Descriptive of the word juice melting like raspberry pomegranate. Like I can see how that can trigger some parts of even me as someone who is literally on my period right the second. It's very visual. <laughs> the only point she's bringing in the kind of masculine perspective is from a sexual way. I like how she's sticking to the theme of 
death though and that release essential to rebuild again and to start a rebirth to start anew room shedding any lessons making room for blessings because this whole album is about release and the process of what it means to be a new period which is releasing we need to it's important so we can make room for our new manifestations and blessings <laughs> She mentions here on each of her albums she likes to include at least one taboo song about something many people deal with but no one talks about in music. I wanted to write a fun, light-hearted song about being a person who experiences menstruation. Our blood represents vitality in life, that's nice. I wanted to, the chorus to be pretty and use analogies for bleeding that were sweet. She's used specifically sweet stuff to change the the narrative um, of something which you might not usually say is sweet. The rumbling sounds that lead into the song are my actual period cramps I recorded on my phone. People would call it weird. It's a strange thing, but art can be very strange. It's not my favorite song though. I'm not gonna lie. I would probably put that at the bottom. I love why she's done it. I think it's an important concept. It's just, it doesn't hit me in that metaphorical way that Melanie usually does. So it's standing a stance that is important to her. And that is also very Melanie. So back in the day, we used to isolate women who were on their periods. That was something they had to go through, disconnect them from society at that point in time. They become different people like emotionally and though that's not the case anymore. Now he's kissing the ground that I walk on trying to get another taste, but I'm all cramped up. Him wanting the, the juice of the pomegranate as she's described it can make a lot of people feel very uncomfortable understandably she's kind of pushing the barrier i guess i guess in a way she is being sarcastic it's like saying like imagine this like who would have thought someone would be like worshiping the ground that i'm on when uh, i'm menstruating song sounds a lot like that song. showing signs of almost gatekeeping what you're doing because it's wrong or weird or strange. Making it almost seem like they wish they were doing it, but they're not. So therefore they're gonna make other people who are doing it feel bad. <laughs> Fairy of a knife. I think it's like suppression of someone's like femininity, I think with this song. Maybe it's aimed at people who are quick to bash on someone, someone embracing that side of themselves. Push your penis into your mouth, I'll make you choke on your doubt. It's like where someone may put all of their worth. They don't think a lot of power and strength comes from nymphology. Like, I think that is very feminine. I like be the manic pixie dream girl that you fucking ought to be. This isn't about like needing the other half of yourself like in somebody else or being conformed, I guess, and living like a very earthly structure and approach and everything you do. And instead it's like being wacky and strange and literally out of this world in embodying very like mythical creatures. <laughs> Oh, this bit reminds me of, in my mind anyway, the beginning of Moon Cycle where she has a very dramatized like LA accent. This kind of makes me feel like she's probably digging at people who knock those down who are into things that aren't, like I said, very emperor energy. I quote tarot cards a lot, I know. And I think it's very telling when someone's so anti girls who find fascination in crystals and fairy energy and goddess work and deities and things um, because it seems like 
silly and unimportant in anything it doesn't matter what it is like if you have such a such an opinion on the way someone improves themselves as a person evolves and like captivates their own kind of form of power like consciousness i suppose then you've probably got a bit of an issue somewhere deep inside yourself in your own doubt and strength such as she says herself push your penis into your mouth i'll make you choke on your doubt i wanted it to be bratty that's the word i was going for it felt bratty commentary piece on the box a lot of men put femme presenting people in when they call us names like manic pixie dream girl <laughs> definitely relate to this song you called the other day i stayed away i left your shit unread four times today it felt like bliss used to miss your kiss now i'm hop skip jumping over narcissists i really appreciate she writes her own music i think i wouldn't like her anywhere near as much as i do if she didn't that is talent <sighs> throwing all your stuff into the abyss now the role is reversed and told you i'm a switch <laughs> see the horns on my head they're from goddesses that feels so good I cannot explain to you how much I feel this song in my bones and have personal experience. When this shit happens, it feels so good. I get this with a lot of things in life, like things play out in a series of circumstances, like in career, in love, and you feel tested in the moment. To be fair, I guess this is what the album's talking about struggles and getting over them and like realizing what they are evolving as a person blah 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 you experience something that's a struggle at the time and ultimately in the end you realize it was a massive lesson i always feel that struggle that lesson comes back again and again and again in your life in different forms maybe very similar to the original struggle to almost like test you to see how much of a lesson you have learned from the initial experience how far have you come are you able to say no this time are you able to stand up for yourself more this time do you remember what last time taught you like how can you do things differently this time and like i said that can come in like standing up for yourself in certain situations or just choosing to walk away completely remembering what to ask for this time in in new circumstances so you don't end up where you were before and that moment that true like evolutionary moment where you do something so differently that makes you such a different person to what you were before when it first happened. It's like a light bulb, it's like a switch in you of like, I have come full circle now and this is where I should have been in the first place, but I had to have that experience to kind of get there. Anyway, the song's just started and I'm telling a story. Beep, beep, move out the way. This one's flying its way on up to the top. No, I never knew what it meant, what it meant to be content with you. Everything I expressed, I professed, it never quite made it through. And to put the cherry on the cake, it's such a catchy, catchy beat. <laughs> <laughs> the words of this almost sound like a rap. So tasty, so delicious. Every time you tell a lie, I'm praying that you choke. Should have listened to the signs and the horoscopes. It's like that part of you that tries to justify the physical world around you when intuitively, spiritually, everything's screaming, absolutely not. And I've been there and I know that feeling. And once again, that is a lesson to learn because yes, it's important to like have the kind of logical side of yourself that needs to bear in mind the actual fact of the matter and things but there is a really big 
force there's a power out there that tells you when things are right and wrong and feelings never lie like the body never lies in how a certain situation makes you feel and you have this knowing of what you should and shouldn't do it's hard to have full faith in that and i think part of the lesson as well is realizing time and time again that things happen as you kind of predicted them to i had like this almost psychic sense but it gets easier to listen to that and have more faith in that over time connection to yourself never lies that like feelings in yourself never lie but Unfortunately, people, voices, do. nice it's all, it almost sounds a little bit circusy i love never knew what it meant what it meant to be content with you that's that feeling that you just can't knock in you where like something isn't sitting right and you're not feeling complete in an ease and bliss i suppose with certain people's energy it's melanie's favorite song as well that happens all the time when i pick a favorite song it's always the same as hers <laughs> finally able to articulate perfectly what i had dealt with in my last relationship i wanted the lyrics to be the most savage and the most cunty <laughs> but still it's not savage in a way where it's like in a very invasive manner it's like poetic <laughs> it's about dealing with narcissists who ironically calls you evil just because you're able to see through their bs i spent the entire day blowing out my vocals recording it <sighs> she um healed some throat chakras with that one <laughs> right the last song we're finally here come on now we're in the womb the final form of crybaby's death experience as she enters a new form of life oh i am in a womb oh that's nice The concept of choosing your life before you've actually began it. A lot of people feel that is a choice that we make um, in the family we enter, the life that we enter, on the missions and the life lessons that we have before us. I like the fact she said, I know my brother, he'll make the journey later on, conversations in the cosmos. They've actually like met before already. It's that sense of knowing before you enter Earth and you forget. <laughs> what the heck? That's so weird. I literally just said that. It's all a game now, but once I'm in the world, it's lost. Memory's gone to evolve. I like this. I like the very clear like switch in sound as you're kind of entering, well, I guess leaving, <laughs> being in a portal throughout the whole album because everything was very like mystical and mysterious and floaty and like ethereal, I suppose. It suddenly comes very like clearer and maybe a bit more down to earth with this chorus. There's an element to the chorus that sounds, I guess, somewhat more familiar <laughs> um, to her previous stuff, though it's very bassy, I like it. I like this as well. I like all the different layers to this song. Ooh, this is nice. Right, so that outro obviously leads us very intentionally into the first song, Death, because it's a cycle at the end of the day. Death is life, life is death. And she's talking about death at the beginning, life at the end. And we just keep going round and round and round and round, constantly renewing our energy. I just feel like I have just 
experienced a ceremony, I suppose, for <laughs> the skin that Melanie is is shedding in these songs' messages and meanings and her life and the process, the processes she's been through. And I think that's a really nice way to see this album. I think this album would be really nice to pair alongside any kind of spell work or like just shadow work if you're like journaling on concepts in your life and things you're going through. I think this is a really nice piece to listen to alongside it. That's probably quite intentional. It's very like psychological and like philosophy focused and it's very deep and meaningful and I really appreciate that because all of these elements and aspects are things that I've been very focused on myself recently and looking into and learning about. She's basically articulated all of the things that are like swamping my mind and, sp and like spinning around in there right now so I'm very impressed. I have good things to say about this album if anyone ever asks but my kind of final thoughts are presented here. <laughs> that air freshener's timing today. I just really enjoy soaking up her stuff and studying it. I probably will continue to this evening as I listen to it again. My thoughts may change and I might kind of discover and recognize new things, but I'd love to know what you thought, what you think, and we can maybe talk about new things I'm discovering in the comment section below. So if you liked it, didn't like it, all opinions are welcome. I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm curious to know what Melanie ends up doing in terms of like her stage presence and stuff, because I know she's been performing these songs in a very very strange get up, I suppose you want to call it. People seem to think this is going to be like her identity, like her kind of aesthetic now, like full on, like you're just not going to see Melanie anymore on stage. I don't believe that. I think if there's going to be anyone in the industry who doesn't believe in sticking to like one identity and, and one label and slapping like a be all end all look about yourself that you're going to stick to for the rest of your artistic journey, it's, it's going to be Melanie. I think people just need to like let artists create and express without freaking out about like what that means to you and <laughs> whether or not it's a good or bad thing in your eyes. I just like to see people being creative. I wish I could just dance around as a mushroom and call that art. I suppose I could. I might go do that now. But subscribe to my channel to be notified if you like what you saw and you want to see more of this face. And like the video if you like um, album reactions. So I'll make more of these ones. I'm on social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I have tarot readings. If you want to book a tarot reading with me, if you want knowledge from this wise old mouth of mine, then you can email me down there or message me on any of my social medias. Let's love. Bye.